Hey guys, welcome back to Stellar Sessions. Uh, got a full house today. We've got Matt Zim with us, Richard Wren, and also Brandon Young. Hello guys, how are you doing? Good. Nice Good to see you. Great. Excellent. So Thanks for having me. No worries. Well, you two have been back. This is Matt's first time. So do you want to go first, Matt? Do you want to give the audience a little bit of background on yourself? Uh, and, well, I've been selling on, uh, on Amazon for a couple of years. I come out of the uh, music and fashion industry here in New York City. Cool. Um, and obviously, Richard? Uh, yes. Uh, I'm uh, based in China. I've been selling Amazon since 2016. And uh, before Amazon, I was doing uh, AliExpress and also uh, Wish, Wish app. Yeah. Cool. And obviously, a lot of people know Brandon, but a quick introduction and then we'll get underway. Uh, just a private label seller since 2016. Funny you mentioned Wish. We had a little bit of success with Wish when it, we first started as well. That was funny. But, oh, we did. Um, yeah. Yeah. Then, uh, then all the Chinese started doing that free plus shipping shit. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't compete with it but yeah. uh yeah yeah so uh i also coach have a program uh you know like a, a program and then also sell yeah yeah right cool so what we're going to do this is a follow-up of coronavirus we've been having discussions in the background i'd like to start with you brandon because you put yourself into self-quarantine and obviously there's hysteria out there we want to avoid all that stuff talk me through you've come back from china when how long you've been put in self-quarantine and what's, uh, what's the word on the street for you at the moment? Yeah, so we were in China for a few weeks um, with my wife being Chinese and with us having an office there in Shenzhen. Uh, we visited with our employees. We gave them their New Year's bonus. We, uh, and then we went uh, to a showroom. We finalized a lot of orders, maybe 35 orders. Mm -hmm. And then the holiday started and we went and visited family and she has family in a couple different provinces. Uh, one of them is Jiang Chi in Nanchung. So we went to Nanchung, which is just south of Hubei, which is the one where Wuhan is, where it's just completely shut down. So we were only a province over. And uh, they, they basically found a bunch of cases starting to pop up in, in that province. But we were just staying with the family, driving to her grandparents. The day of Chinese New Year, uh, we had a major issue uh, because China issued a, uh, a warning to everybody in the entire country to cancel all of their parties. They said, don't do dinners, um, don't go out for your festivals, because you have to imagine this is the biggest day of the year for them. It would be the equivalent of you know, July 4th here in the US, uh, you know, everyone's doing barbecues, everyone's going out to dinner and all these celebrations. Families have traveled around from around the world to go back to their families. And so now they're telling everyone to beat their families away with brooms, which I actually saw a video of someone actually doing some family showed up with some gifts. And the, the old grandmother's uh, grandfather is sitting there beating the family away with a broom to tell them to get away. But then they say, Oh, leave the gifts and get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. But so we locked ourselves in her grandparents. We got together, we had dinner um, and we decided, OK, it's getting pretty bad. We need to get out of there. So we we had we, we went back to Shenzhen where our apartment and our office is. Uh, we stayed a night there. We were supposed to fly out three days later in Hong Kong. And we were just going to hole up in the apartment. But I decided it was better to just get to Hong Kong and stay near the airport just in case, because everyone was starting to restrict travel from China, even just driving across the border there was, could be a problem eventually. So we ended up just getting a hotel and started the quarantine at that time, basically. But then we still had to get on a plane, fly to Dallas from Hong Kong, fly from Dallas to Miami. No one checked us anywhere. And it was just, um, yeah, I don't know when the quarantine would start. Maybe after we were on the plane, we wore a mask the entire time. But, you know, so if you count when we landed last week, it was last Wednesday. So it's been, it's day eight uh maybe uh now uh if not then it's maybe day 10 or 11 but no one told us we had to do a quarantine no one told us to stay away from people luckily we do well and we don't have to be around other people and so we just decided okay we're gonna give it two weeks because the incubation period when you can be asymptomatic and still uh have uh the ability to transmit it to other people is supposedly 14 days but they just came out with a case that was 20 days so it's pretty scary yeah no, that makes sense. So let's talk about the the masks as well. So with Matt, we had a, a lot of conversation. I'll go to Richard on this as well, because we've looked into 
acquire a load of masks to get them circulated to people. Originally last week, I'd done a, I'd done a bit of grandstanding on a on Facebook Live and saying everyone's gorging when in actual fact, I got it wrong. The, <laughs> there's a shortage basically of materials. Therefore, there's a limitation there in the marketplace. Therefore, costs have gone up. But Matt, do you want to take up the story of our discussions and what you've experienced? Yeah, I mean, I, I think he, he, here's where it's at right now. Uh, the Chinese government has taken over all the disposable mask factories. Um, mm -hmm. The product, the material that they use for the masks is this PM 2.5 filters. Uh, the, the prices for those filters have gone up 10x. So mm -hmm. there is a shortage um, uh, for the people who to supply that. But more importantly, anybody who's getting disposable masks out of China is screwed because the government has taken over those factories. They can't even consider orders. I've talked to other factories uh, you know, around the world. You can't even talk to them. They said, don't even talk to us for another four or five months. So there's, you know, the, you know, but more importantly, the material to make the disposable mask, there is a shortage. And on top of that, the government is not allowing any factories to go to work until February 10th. Right. Initially, I had my factory, they had some employees, they brought back, people were paying them four times the money to come back early. But Thank now the money. government yeah. cut yeah. that out. You can't even go into the factories until the 10th. Yeah. And yeah, then they have it blocked. We, we, we've noticed that in certain cities, the government is on the streets. You can't, there's no public transportation. And if you try to get into a factory, they'll actually uh, arrest you. Right. Yeah. And, and they're not, and, and, and the Chinese are forbidden from traveling from different provinces. I mean, it's going to be a shit show. <laughs> I, gotta, I actually was able to, I was, I was able to get somebody in my factory to grab some product, get it to the express because February 3rd shipments were supposed to happen. So they were able to get it for shipments to go out the third, but that's been grounded. It's stuck at UPS right now. February 10th is just, I mean, <laughs> it's gonna be fucking, I mean, it's gonna be a big shit. Yeah, you, UPS, you might be in a world of hurt because I think that the union, the union um, uh, employees from UPS have refused to go back to China. So, and I don't know how long Yeah, I mean, that last. shipment's sitting, sitting there right now. So. Yeah, it might, it might stick in that warehouse for three months. Like that, that like, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend doing anything by air. USPS, UPS, FedEx, avoid it um, unless you can route it through Hong Kong by a courier or something. But even Hong Kong now, people are starting to restrict flights. I would, I would say stick to sea, get it on a container because the virus doesn't last long on surface. So the, the, and the people in the boats don't really, they're not as uh, particular or unionized as the, the fly. Like Actually, the, the World Health pilot. Organization put out um, some tips about you cannot contact, it can, can get it from, there is actually World Health, which I'm actually looking to put in as inserts hmm. um, that you can't contain the virus from packaging or letters. It does not, the virus does not live on that. So yeah, uh, yeah. the World Health Organization. Well, I, well I've done another podcast and it'll probably cross-reference what I've said here, but can you give me some clarity as you've got more knowledge on this? If someone, I spoke to someone the other day, there's a possibility that some people have actually been reusing the use, reusable, the, the, the disposable mask, like washing them. Can, if they're repackaged, can the vir virus still be carried in those? Or it's just that the fact that- All right, let me break this down. Reus cool. Here's the, first of all, any reusable mask that is certified in, in particular by the yeah. National Institute of Safety and Health, NASH, yeah. Those masks are disposable because if you get any bacteria on it, you have to throw it out. You yeah. Cannot so that's what I'm saying. Mask. So when they're washing them and if they repackage them and send them off, that that's the is problem. absolutely devastating. You, you yeah. get contagious. Absolutely. Yeah. That's why I wanted to double check. So we need to, to be careful <clears throat> with that. So for instance, Richard has been helping and we've got a small little team of um, volunteers over in the Philippines. Like we've managed to locate two and a half thousand masks so far. And a few are reusable. Yeah, they're disposable. So yeah. they're fifth. Yeah, so it's two and a half thousand units in total in boxes of fifty. And we've also located ones where we paid through the nose for some of the. Uh, I think it's like one hundred and fifty units. And I mean, you send in some units to my VAs, like high class, yeah. like high quality ones, to look after those. And yeah. we want to try and distribute. And so what Richard is doing, he found a factory that was. 14 cents a unit and it was all all right until what you just said where now the factory is ignoring him but Richard do you want to take up the story here of that what happened there yeah so I be able to found a factory uh, located in Qingdao he's also uh, they're also making uh, you know the mask and also other uh, 
uh, medical equipment supply. Uh, and then there was a lady who answered the call, like, you know, she's to uh, be able to actually, you know, help out with like 10,000 units. And, uh, but I only be able to talk her into more details through WeChat. And then, um, you know, I was at the same time trying to looking for other factories who can, you know, doing the similar thing. You know, the older factory needs to say, no, no, the, the whole yeah. production line to be taken over by the, you know, local authorities. Uh, we not only like, can now taking any food, uh, order from outside, we're not even like in charge of the, you know, production anymore. And then at the same time, you know, that lady from Qingdao, they start actually, you know, avoiding the course. So I think it's pretty much the same the situations. Uh, I think if the one thing I can add into that is, uh, you know, um, that uh, the Hubei province is actually uh, one of the uh, largest manufacturer base for non-woven uh, fabric product. Uh, yeah. They actually, you know, um, those like a raw material they're making for the grocery bags, you know, cleaning cloth, you know, so uh, the same material they're using for the face mask. Yeah. So I think that when the virus hit, like which is the center of the Wuhan, it's inside the Hubei province. So that actually really caused like, you know, um, a shortage of the mask because the worker they all got locked down. They can now go back to the factory. And also, uh, when the first is re released, people go into like a panic mode. They start going panic, like a buying stock. Only later on, like the government start actually issuing, you know, the the ban that you can only restrict to buy, you know, a certain like a five or ten like a mask per person with an actual ID to show up. Yeah. Um, and even right now, like a dose is, you know, it's, 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 it's the most of the time is not available anymore. So a lot of people have to be using like, you know, reusable, like a, a ones word, just stay at home, yeah. you know, at, mm -hmm. at all. Uh, you yeah, know, avoiding all the, like, going outside. You, my factory, the, the official <laughs> government way not to get the virus, let me quote over here, is what they are telling people in China, the most populated city in the world, what about is there's to wear masks and keep certain distance from each other to protect you from the virus. That yeah. is the government is telling their people is so, to not walk next. And they have a video with it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't what walk they're, next, anybody. And what they're saying is in, in certain provinces and certain cities, um, like in Guangzhou and, and uh, what they're telling people to do is you have to stay in your home with your family. And once every two days, one family member can leave with a government ID wow. to go grocery shopping. And, um, and now they're saying that you can get it through your eyes. Sometimes the mask isn't even, the mask isn't even going to be good enough. Well, to hand to touch it is don't touch, wash your hands before you touch yeah. your eye, nose or your mouth. That yeah. is from the World Health Organization. That is technically the best way to. But can you imagine in America? You think that that would fly if they told everyone in Miami to stay and stay inside their house, and only one person could leave every two days to go grocery shopping? Not even tell. They're enforcing it. That's the yeah. crazy part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're not just telling. They are. It is a lockdown. This. Is no, no. The government. The government has the military everywhere. But in like, it, if this had happened in any other country, the world would be absolutely fucked. Like. The fact that this yeah. happened in China, where they can actually control their population to a point, and the population has enough like understanding of okay, this is serious. I don't like they they obey. They're obedient enough as a population to to not spread it. Like the fact that they even have this close to contained with how bad of a virus it is is a miracle. Like this in any other country, this would be worldwide already. Yeah, I mean, I talked to several factories and several of the disposal. They're definitely freaked out about it. It's not like <laughs> this is the thing. They're they're legitimately scared. So there could be yeah, other this, this virus out there the, that we don't know about. This virus is not uh, natural. Uh, so there there are rumors, and I've read some studies, and true. they say that the RNA the RNA sequencing in the virus is not natural it's man it is man-made and manipulated was it was it something that i read a report uh canadian scientist yes. yeah was been yeah. arrested yeah. yeah yeah apparently there there might be some rna strands or sequences like part of this rna sequence might have uh hiv virus uh elements built into it to make it more uh transmittable mm. for longer periods of time without symptoms which makes it much more dangerous and easy to spread yeah scary um on a positive note i've got a message here from a friend of mine alan that him and the, his guys um a very wealthy guy from singapore and a, a group uh, come together 
and uh, bought thirty thousand dollars worth of masks for a, that, which is a hundred thousand units which they're distributing. So that's good. Um, I mean, that puts the two and a half thousand being Richard the sorted in the shade at the moment. But um, no, I just wanted to see if there's anything that sellers out there can do. We have these resources, right? Like most of us are manufacturing, say, in China. You have uh, your team in the Philippines and stuff. What more can be done? Is there anything we do? And this is why we're going down the route of buying up like wholesale where we can, even if it's a bit more expensive, and get them out. It doesn't cost a huge amount to do that, even at two and a half thousand units. Um, oh, Richard, you looked outside of China, didn't you? Did you have any joy with any yeah. other? Uh, sorry, I lost you for the last, uh, few, last few seconds. Yeah, I did, you've done research outside of China for wholesale. Have you found any other suppliers? Uh, yes, uh, I'm actually uh, looking into contact with wholesalers uh, in New Zealand, um, yeah. which that have, you know uh, uh, that I've been living uh, there for twelve years. So um, hopefully, like uh, if uh, you know um, they can actually uh, right now they're actually on a public holiday, so. Um, I will actually uh, get uh, my friend helping me to contact each one of those wholesalers, you know, uh, in New Zealand to see if they have any uh, uh, stock reserved. And uh, like a, one or two of them, they already put up like a notification on the on the on the website. It says only like, available for actually uh, surgeons, you know, yeah. or um, like a dentist, you know, who actually yeah. need this. So um, licensed but practitioners, for, yeah. Yeah, but uh, the other uh, the other field that you know uh, we uh, I need to contact them to find out if there are any uh, left. And also, I contact my friend from uh, South Korea. Uh, they do have like a, a manufacturer over there, and yeah. also um, I think Korea and and especially especially Japan has been really supportive in uh, to the cause. Uh, donate only uh, not only the mask but also like a, a disposal protect uh, medical protective suits which is actually the hospital need like a, um, even more urgently than a mask yeah. um, uh, it, for, for, you know, obviously for the doctor and nurse. Um, so I've, uh, I've uh, watched a couple of videos that actually the doctor at the front line, I've uh, been talking about like, you know, uh, they uh, have to wear the, like a, the, the suit of, you know, uh, like a, you know, for a very long time uh, rather than waste it because of the shortage. Yeah. And so they, uh, they just like, you know, uh, they cannot go to the bathroom, you know, like we're, you know, uh, having water because obviously they will be ruining the suit. Mm -hmm. And uh, also giving the fact that, you know, in China, a little bit different than the, maybe the other Western um, countries, majority of the nurses is actually in the female. So that makes like, things even more like, you know, uh, like um, inconvenient. Yeah. A lot of doctors, they actually even wear, wear diapers, um, just, you know, uh, to say like not going to the hospital, uh, going to the, going to the, the bathroom. bathroom. Yeah. That's yeah. So, uh, I'm, I'm kind of working on that to see if we can actually get, uh, like a, a more, uh, protected, uh, suit. Um, cause there's a certain standards that, uh, you, they, they are using, um, before there are people making donations, but a lot of them is actually not up to the standards. So they cannot really use them, but have to return them back, make it even more mass. Yeah. So, yeah, so I've been working on that to see if it's actually possible we can get uh, a lot of uh, more suits into China, but also um, country maybe like the Philippines or India, you know, um, less, you know, finger crossed and nothing will be actually, you know, get spread out. And, you know, um, but just on the safe side, you know, if it does actually, you know, um, you know, uh, sort of like in getting ha um, happened and the doctor over there will be also needing, uh, you know, that uh, suit as well. That makes sense. So. Brandon, you've got like hundreds of products, right? You work at tremendous scale. What would you say now is, how are you playing this? Like you've been there, you've been on the boots on the ground, you've seen what's going on, you see the shortages and limitations. How, what impact do you see this having on your business this year? Yeah, we're proper effed. <laughs> it's, it's not, um, I think people are underestimating. It depends where you're getting your stuff made. Yeah. But you have to imagine that, people are locked down from traveling. Like uh, what Richard was saying earlier, um, you know, you're all the workers traveled to home for the holiday and now they're stuck there and they're not going to be able to come back to the factories yeah. uh, to, to work. And you're, you're looking at massive delays in, and, and, and production is going to be slow. Some 
things you get made aren't going to be made at all. Like uh, the things made in Hubei province aren't going to be able to get made. Um, Hangzhou, uh, Ningbo, parts of those cities where their massive factories are shut down. I have stuff that's made in Guangzhou and, and the government's not letting people back into the factories yet, but hmm. they're having a problem in Guangzhou. It's like the second, it's it, the province has the second most, um, like Guangdong province has the second most cases. Um, yeah. It's a far second, but it's still pretty serious. Um, and they're, they're worried. They're now saying that the, the virus can travel and, and be transmitted from water even. Um, and that, um, definitely from feces. So now they're wondering, okay, are we, are we safe from even drinking water, uh, and washing our hands? Yeah. Uh, you know, like you wash your hands thinking that you're getting rid of it and then you rinse your hands, the soap off, and then you touch your eyes, you might be transmitting it. Yeah. Uh, so I think overall I'm, from a business I'm drinking this tea now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, once you heat the water, I'm sure you're okay. But yeah. the, um, the, the, the issue I think is that, um, no one knows. I th like they're, they're going to supposedly on the 10th. Now they're going to let workers go back to work, but I think people are going to have trouble traveling. I think people are going to be scared to go. And I think that you're going to have a situation where most production is going to be limited or, uh, or shut off for at least another couple of weeks beyond that. And then it might take months. It really depends because you have a 14 to 20 day incubation period and, and we're not even at the height yet. Yeah. You know, like the numbers are going up drastically every single day. They're trying to contain it as best they can. Um, but depending on how it can be transmitted, um, we don't know how bad it really is <laughs> until another for another week, maybe maybe another 10 days. And then after that, then we'll be able to assess, OK, we've kind of contained it. It's not spreading as much anymore. That Wuhan and Hubei are absolutely uh, destroyed because they think that there's 200,000 cases or more just in that province, but they're not even being diagnosed because they didn't have enough uh, serum to even diagnose them. They're mm -hmm. being turned away from hospitals sick with the virus, but it's not being diagnosed as the virus because they, they don't have enough beds or enough materials or enough resources to even test them. Mm -hmm. And so people are going back to their, to their houses and locking themselves in their houses with the whole family sick and, um, to each and people other. are... And people are dying, so you have a death toll, and the death rate isn't right either because you have the death people dying, but they're they're dying. Their the official reason for death is being said as um, lung disease or uh, pneumonia. You know, it's not being it's not being uh, accounted for as the virus because they haven't been properly diagnosed, and they they're yeah. not gonna they're not gonna waste serum on someone that's already dead when they have all these other cases that they're still trying to solve. Yeah, and a lot, lot of things I've heard as well is that if they're more like elderly people or of ill health, the virus is what pushes them over the over the edge anyway. You know, if you've got someone yeah. who's like really fit, then you're there's a good chance that you're going to recover. Whereas, yeah, the mortality rate is much higher for people that are elderly, extremely young babies, and mm -hmm. then uh, people with uh, pre-existing conditions and and yeah. underlying health issues. Yeah. So. Like, you know, if, if you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, and you're in fit and in good shape, you have a very high chance of surviving this because it's just walking pneumonia. And, mm. and you know, but the point is, you're just a carrier at that point, And that's the problem. Yeah. Even if even if the mortality rate is two or 3%, 2% would mean that if it infected everybody on the planet, you would still have f over 14 million people dead. Yeah, that's a that's a problem. That is a problem. Um, so staying out of China now. Yeah. To, yeah. Sorry, Richard. I know you're stuck there, my friend. But no, started... I mean, if we're looking on the positive, uh, no, like extremely positive cases, like uh, if we look at back in SARS 2013, yeah. um, you know, um, eventually this is whole thing go, uh, like goes away. I think it's about the uh, end of the May, mm -hmm. uh, early uh, June, um, yeah. because there's a lot of similarity between the two viruses, you know, SARS and uh, uh, a coronavirus, but obviously, you know, this is more con contagious, you know, of the uh, coronavirus, but uh, there's a similarity that both of the virus can now deal good, uh, you know, very good with the heat. Mm -hmm. And so during the summertime, you know, um, so uh, that's, uh, like, obviously, it's, it's going to be uh, devastating if it's been dragging, you know, for that long. You know, but uh, uh, it, it could be a chance, like you know, um, the, so the as the temperature goes up, you know, so uh, we see like a more uh, least cases has been found. You know, and hopefully there'll be a 
you know, like a treatable, uh, like a medi medications um, yeah. that is available. Because um, right now there's a, there's a, you know, few, but there, there still need to be actually doing the clinical trial at a full scale before that, you know, it's, it can put into the uh, patient yeah. on a bigger scale. Cool. I just want to make sure I'm clear on this podcast is that not everyone who's listening is fucked, basically. But there, we do have to warn people of what is going on out there. Uh, it seems to be quite severe in, in a lot of cases. But China's never, you know, surprised me. It's, the, it's so huge. That's why everyone goes there for the manufacturers. It's the only place that you can go and get a troop of 20,000 people to work on the product at a factory, right? So even with what's going on, there's a percentage, even if it's in the thousands, there's what 2.4 billion people in china so we what? have to be kind of keep everything on the ground you know yes uh, also listen uh, uh uh dan i could share you the uh just try to try to send you maybe you want to put up in the group the uh to reduce your risks for the virus yeah. from the yeah. world health organization what they suggest you do yes um you know, uh, some of it is known protected contact with live, wild, and or farm animals. Thoroughly yeah. cooked meat and eggs. Avoid close contact with anyone with cold or flu-like symptoms. Which is interesting because, uh, as you know, here in America, a lot of people got the flu. There's mm. definitely, I mean, actually around the world, uh, a lot of people just getting general flu stuff seems to be going around. I actually got it twice, so that's a little scary. Yeah. And then cover, you know, it's all kind of basic stuff, but I can send you the, uh, the info. We can put it all in the show notes, yeah, if you don't mind. We'll, uh, we'll put all the URLs and stuff. Um, any parting words from you, Brendan? No, I mean, uh, just stay safe. Um, you know, we're not out of the clear here in the U.S. We've got a couple of weeks to see if anyone flew in and, and spread it. I mean, like, I, I came in unchecked last week, so... Yeah. Uh, from Hong Kong and there were people that were connecting from just at, even as of like maybe the 23rd 24th they were still accepting flights from mainland um, so just uh, just keep washing your hands uh, just do the normal stuff that you do um, ultimately um, you know we're just gonna have to wait and see I think that you know hopefully you can start to look for other places to source your products if you have an opportunity to go to India Mexico um, Pakistan, anywhere in Asia, um, look into Africa. There are, there are countries in Africa that are really ramping up production. China has been focusing on developing, uh, you know, different countries there and uh, for cheap production. But um, yeah, start start looking elsewhere just in case. Yeah, uh, I'll leave it there, gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm sure we can do another update uh, when it's necessary over the next few weeks. But thank you for joining us and take care.